Live in the big city in an apartment. DLC. Yeah, what's new? <laughs> that's that's been like that since since the very beginning, with the exception of the apartments. You didn't have that in Sims One. Want to own a bowling alley or some other kind of business? DLC. Yeah. Okay, so why I that shouldn't be a, a surprise. Um. Let's keep going. Doesn't even really include the game packs. I mean, they have over time just found a way to cut the most basic things out of the game in order to sell back to you. This is all already an issue in the gaming industry, but I mean, all right, sir. Okay, so yes and no. This goes back to the shady business practices again. So, yeah, there are some cases where companies and and they've. Um, this has been found like with Mass Effect 3, right? To where like there was an entire chapter that was cut out and then sold as DLC. Um, so yeah, there are cases where there is stuff that is being cut out of the game. I don't think that's always the case though. I think there are cases to where, and I remember reading this somewhere, to where they have a team that's dedicated to like main part of the game or an expansion and then you've got like this team over here that's working on maybe objects for a stuff pack. So to say that it's like, oh, we're creating all this game. All right, now let's take these bits and pieces and move them off to the other side and we'll sell them separately. Um, I don't think that's the, the be all end all case on every situation. Now I know that it's been shown and, and, and cases to where like the coding is in the game and and there have been modders that have been able to pull it out so i get that i understand that um and maybe the objects weren't ready at that time i but what you're saying i don't think is the be all end all yes i think there is a little bit of shadiness but i also think that it's not all that way either I don't think we're getting, I don't think any of us are getting the full complete story unless we are sitting there working with the developers, would we know the real story? He's saying that there are plenty of DLCs for Sims. There are. All of those DLCs he just mentioned have always been DLCs since The Sims 1. And the Sim jump cut, jump cut, jump cut. This is what I'm talking about. I hate that. Too, which he said was his favorite. I don't think you can really fairly say that the game is getting worse and worse and the EA is ripping you off. Yeah, no, the game has not been getting worse and worse. I mean, it's... <sighs> Definitely with 3 was at its peak. It did lose some things um, from Sims 2. Like, for example, rabbit holes. I mean, those are the most annoying things in Sims 3. I hate it, the fact that you sit there and teleport it inside at your car. But at least, at least we had cars in Sims 3. You don't have any in Sims 4. I think everything is was getting good all the way through Sims 3. And then Sims 4 happened. And then it's like, what? what is this? <laughs> what happened here? So Sims 4 is the exception. I think Sims 4 is where things... Uh, kind of went the opposite direction. This is a powerful game. A lot of computers struggle to run it. You can't... Okay, so... Sims 3 was a powerful game. Sims 4, if you remember... If I remember correctly, they um, were trying to make this a little bit more... They were trying to lean more towards the Sims 2 side so that way it was not bogging down people's computers because it was having so much of an issue. Sims 3 was having so much of an issue uh, on people's computers. And so they were trying to 
trying to go with something that wouldn't be as um, resource uh, intense. Expect to have seasons, cats and dogs, city living, all of that, like all in a base game. That's okay. So I, I, I kind of agree and I kind of disagree on that. Let's take, for example, um, let's go back to Grand Theft Auto um, Five. There's, there's uh, pets in there. Uh, well, there is a. A dog. <laughs> um, there's definitely weather. You get radio stations. It's a huge open world. There's driving. You can't oh you can't go into every single house or anything like that. But but your your people, your characters are pretty detailed. You know, as far as the walking, your NPCs that are all around. I mean, they're pretty lively. Um, uh, the game engine behind Grand Theft Auto V would make a great Sims game, in my opinion. I mean, think about all the things that you can do in Grand Theft Auto V that has nothing to do with Robin Banks or, or anything like that. You've got uh, doing like the stock market thing, you know, going and playing, going to a club and, and throwing darts or playing tennis or it's got the the flight uh you can do flight lessons and there's so many things that you can do in that game and then start start grabbing stuff from like uh like elder scrolls and and some of these other games bring all those ideas into one game and yeah that would be one heck of a sims game um that'd be like the dream sims game that everyone's been wanting you know um but what kind of machine would it take to run that? Um, it probably would take uh, someone with a beastly machine or, you know, a PlayStation 5 or something to, to run something like that. So can it be put all into one game? Absolutely. Um, but... Can it be sold, you know, I, what kind of audience are they trying to go for? What is the target audience that EA is trying to go for? Do they, are they, they want to try to make this as accessible as possible. If they try to load all this stuff into it, um, that's like trying to get Sims 3 and all of his expansions all into one little thing and say, look at this great Sims game, here you go. It'll cost you 80 bucks. You go and saw it on your computer, and your computer chokes and turns into a ball of fire from space. I mean, hey, 80 bucks, and you got everything with it, but, you know, your computer just kind of choked, cracked, and split in half. Um, or, like, what she's saying is you may want some basics and then just add what you want to it. Not everyone wants pets. Um, not everyone wants a city life. Um, I can't see why you wouldn't want seasons, but I'm sure there are people out there that could care less. You know, maybe they maybe they live in a place that has a lot of snow, and they're like, you know what? I get enough snow in real life. I don't need it in my game. <laughs> I'm sure there's someone. So, so I get what she's saying, um, but I also get a point that you make uh, in your video that yes the technology is there and this all can be in the game too so I I totally get that and if we're going back as far as what is considered a simulation if we were to make let's say Sims 5 a true people simulator then it should have all the bells and whistles and be an amazing thing that would actually require a, a decent computer to play um, and we know EA is not going to do that. EA is going, their business, they're not going to cater to one specific little audience. They're going to try to, they're try they're going to try to get as wide an audience as possible. And so in order to do that, they're going to stick with something, uh, something basic that 
will gain a lot of uh, audience uh, attention. I may not be using all the right words, but I, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. It's just kind of ridiculous. The next point she makes is that most of the DLCs listed have been DLCs since The Sims 1. She seems to think that this is somehow validating it. Now, I never said that because it was in older games that, that makes it okay. Here's my point. Let me break down numbers real quick. I'll even put it in a graph for you guys. This. Okay. I... Sometimes it's not what you say, but how you say it. <laughs> Just saying. Sims 1, 7 expansion packs and DLCs. Sims 2, 10 stuff packs. 8 expansion packs for a total of 18 DLCs. The Sims 3, 11 expansion packs, 9 stuff packs for a total of 20 DLCs. The Sims 4, 5 current expansion packs, 6 current game packs, 14 current stuff packs, and a rewards pack for Sims 3 expansion pack owners, plus a few free DLCs given to players for a total of 25 DLCs. But you forgot The Sims three store you did not mention anything about the store if you add the store into that the sims 3 blows the sims 4 out of the water completely when we're talking about all the little all the worlds that to buy and all the packs that they had the sims 3 when it comes to dlc blows the sims 4 way out of the water and we don't include the free ones so here's a graph in chronological order you can see the amount of DLC packs being... Yeah, so here with Sims 3, if you were to take all the content from the Sims 3 store and make it a pack in itself, it probably would take several packs. I'm pretty positive that it's going to come close to or surpass the Sims 4. So I don't feel that your numbers are accurate here here i agree with i would agree with this this no uh let's keep going offered in each game has been rising few factor okay now there's a there's another thing here that i'm going to get to this is a different video this is from a channel called the no um and i watched uh, their videos from time to time. They did a video a while back, um, and I'll have a link to it in the description, and they talked about uh, the price of games and and also talked about DLC. And they're saying, and, and you'll hear it on some, on, on some of the clips, uh, on this clip here, that t games typically cost about 60 bucks. And that 60 bucks has a long way to go. It's got so much to pay out. It's got publishers to pay out, and it's got to pay the the platform that it's on has got to has got to be paid. So money goes to Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo, and then there's the uh, the store that's selling it, and and all these little costs and figures. I mean, you can check out this video. It's really good. Um, and they'll go into more details as far as like how that money is split up and the cost of, of games of how they've gotten more expensive to make triple A games over the years. But the point that they make is that the games, when they reach that $50, $60 point, they've stayed there and they haven't gone up. And with inflation, they should have gone up. The games that we're getting for fifty, sixty dollars, when you price in inflation, they should actually be higher right now with the with the um, with the amount of, of how things are costing and as far as as far as the development of these games and how much more expensive they are of developing the games, the games should be costing more than what they're selling, and so. When they do sell the DLC, um, I think the expansions are the expansions, but as far as the extra content and stuff like that, and you can consider expansions DLC, you know, whatever, but when you start putting that together, it starts to factor into the price that that game probably should have cost to start with. But I'll, let's play this part of the video so you can hear it. 
year by the inflation rate since the mid 2000s. That's closer to 80. For whatever reason, publishers have found $60 to be the price that proved to be the tipping point for gamers and kept the $60 the same despite budgets ballooning and market inflation. The publishers have to make that money back somehow. After all, a $60 game should cost around $30 to $40 more in the context of other consumer goods. Enter season passes and DLC. On average, the post-release content the publishers put out for games tends to fall into that $30 to $40 zone. When you add up the cost of season passes and DLC to the price of a full release, it actually comes out to right around $80 to $100, which brings it more in line with what the price should actually be because of inflation. They will sell. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. So we're at we're in that gray zone now when it comes to DLC, shady business practices. It is it's all like as clear as mud at this point because in some cases the DLC is justified because it's the only way that they can continue to bring in money um on on something that they that they've made um because you've made a product and now you're trying to continue to make money on that product it's not like they've uh put something out and then have left all this stuff off to the side and like <laughs> suckers now we're gonna sell this tree to you for five bucks and you know i i think i think for the most part that is not the case but there are going to be some cases that yes that is indeed happening so it, it's it's all hazy i think you've got some you've got some honest business practices in there and you've got some dishonesty and the dishonesty is overshadowing the honesty so it just all looks bad you know it's kind of like when you get um, negativity you know negative comments uh from a restaurant or or or, you know, negative customer complaints or something like that. The complaints always seem to overshadow the positives. You know, you get more complaints than you do get uh, positive stuff. It, it, it's like that almost all the time. The book, the majority like to complain more than say, hey, great job. Um, I lost track. Okay, let's see what else is going on here you the ability to have a full year weather cycle and a few holidays to celebrate. Did you know that the game quite literally has a DLC for a DLC? If you Okay, no one is going to argue him on this point. Not even De La Grace argued. Yeah, the whole DLC for a DLC was, was probably the most dumbest idea next to the whole loot boxes for <laughs> Star Wars Battlefront that they have probably had. Um, dumber than Katy Perry's K Katy Perry stuff and Laundry Day stuff, for that matter. Yeah, that was not bright. But if I remember correctly, and that this is from LGR's video, I didn't didn't go and take bits of it, but I thought he said that there were some things from that pack that you could use that you didn't. You didn't have to have the cats and dogs pack. Most of the objects you couldn't use unless you had it, but there were like were a few things in there that you could use. So if you bought the pack, it wasn't completely worthless, just mostly worthless. You get this pet stuff DLC without buying the cats and dogs DLC. You have entirely wasted your money because all of the stuff makes no sense. All right, sir. Oh, sorry. So he is saying that there are plenty of DLCs for Sims. There are. All of those DLCs he just mentioned have always been D DLCs since The Sims 1 and The Sims 2, which he said was his favorite. I don't think you can really fairly say that the game is getting worse and worse and EA is ripping you off when... Okay, so I, I half agree with what she's saying. Um, so some of that stuff, yes, has been in expansion packs, but then some of the stuff has always been in the game. Uh, hot tubs, for example. Um, you Now you can only get a hot tub unless you get... Um, I, I, which one is it? The backyard patio stuff or... 
I don't know. You have to get one of those uh, stuff packs or game packs to, to get the hot tubs now. Um, to my surprise, to, to my surprisement, I couldn't find a trash compactor uh, during my Sims 4 play. I'm look, look, looking through, look, where the heck's the trash compactor? I, I found the trash cans. I looked under appliances. Like, okay, dishwashers. Where's the trash compactor? And I looked through it several times and I didn't see it. So either they're not in the game or they're in one of the packs I don't have. Um, or it's coming in some other pack. I don't know. This is a powerful game. A lot of computers struggle to run it. You can't expect to have seasons, cats and dogs, city living, all of that, like all in a base game. That's just... So, yeah, so this is kind of repeat of what, like I said, I pulled bits of her video and his video and, and kind of put it together. So, like I said, this is not scripted. Kind of ridiculous. Yes, the My First Pet Stuff pack he's talking about, obviously that was really upsetting to a lot of players because you did need to already have cats and dogs to get that pack. I understand where he's coming from with that. I think a lot of... I love this guy's smirk. It's like, hmm, really? <laughs> <laughs> people had that opinion if that had been released a long time after cats and dogs when people might have been thirsty for some more pet stuff like they really wanted more than what the pack had that would have been okay to release it then i agree i agree with you on that the fact was that it was released so soon after cats and dogs that people were like why wasn't this in the pack no this is yeah that that was definitely a stupid move on their their part not at all what I'm saying. I don't think that this should have ever been a DLC. There should never be a DLC for a DLC. And I, and I agree with that point also. I'm glad to see that you seem to agree decently well on this one, but to say that people are thirsty for more DLC that they have to pay hundreds of dollars in totals for is just completely enabling more greed. Okay, so I I think that's a poor choice of words. Um, I don't think people are thirsty for DLC. I think I think people are always looking for more content. Um, now, we all know that there is some very good custom content creators out there. And so, in most, some cases, I guess, that, that might suffice as far as some of the things that you're looking for. Um, I think though like um trash compactors <laughs> i know i would uh would like to maybe see them in the game i'm sure there are some other things that i would like to see um so as far as content you know like that maybe things that uh objects and not i don't mean decoration objects but you know actual objects you can interact with uh, like, oh, hey, curtains, you know, curtains you can close and open. Hey, you know, uh, there's a the thing. Um, I wouldn't say I'm thirsty for it, but I would be interested in it. Um, saying people are thirsty for something makes it sound like they're they're dying of thirst for uh, for EA to save them uh, with a, a dab of water. And I don't think... I don't think Sims players are that desperate. There may be a few, all right, but I don't think in general that most Sims players are that desperate. Um, and I say that because the Sims 3 store apparently uh, went bye-bye uh, because uh, people uh, were not happy uh, being treated like, uh, oh, hey, you're thirsty for more content, aren't you? Sure you are, sure you are. Look what, look what we just put out this month. It'll cost you 20 bucks. But, oh, hey, you know, you get the bonus pack if you spend extra money. Anyway, um, so people are always going to be interested in more content. Um, you want to talk about people who are thirsty for DLC, Grand Theft Auto V. Let's go back to that again. And I don't mean online. I mean single player. Um, 
yeah, the, the online for Grand Theft Auto V is getting new content. The single player game is not. And there are people that are they are thirsty for that. They, they've gone and said in forums that they will pay for expansions and for stuff. And Rockstar Games is like, nope, we're just focusing on the online game right now. So, you, you want to talk about thirsty for DLC, I don't think it's The Sims. I think it's some of the other games where things are not being developed, where game packs are not being developed, or expansions are not being developed. From EA. In reality, there should never be hundreds of dollars of DLC for a video game ever. If you're going to pay $60 for a game, it should include enough content for you to be honestly satisfied with that $60 price tag. That is subjective. Sorry. That is, that is a very subjective uh, term there. One person could be satisfied uh, with one thing for $60, and another person may think it's a complete waste. So that's entirely subjective. And then if we go back to the, the video on the no, um, we already know, <laughs> no, 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 no pun intended, um, that a $60 game is really supposed to cost more than $60. So we may already be getting more than what we should be getting um, uh, for what we're paying for. I know that's not something that you want to hear. It's like, I don't want to be paying 80 bucks, 90 bucks for a game. And yeah, and the publishers know that because they know if they start making games that are that, that price that people aren't going to buy it. So... They have to scale things accordingly, saying, well, how can we keep this to a $60 game? Well, let's release this portion of it, and then... And, and I'm, now, I know what you're probably thinking. is like, oh, see, now you're proving my point that they're cutting things out of the game. Um, to me, that's... There's one thing as far as saying... You know, you've got all these pieces, okay? We'll say my hand here, right? Um, you're, you've got a game here, and you've got all five pieces here. But you can't... Because of the cost of the game, there's no way that you can put this game out with all five pieces for only 60 bucks. There, There's no way that you can do it and make a profit. Um, but you know this ahead of time. So you know that you want to have these five pieces for your game at you know during during its life but you start off with the first piece so you really haven't cut anything out of the game you just haven't developed the other four parts yet now if they had developed the whole game and then said okay now we're going to lock this content out and this content out okay well then you know you might have a point there, but I mean, see, it's it's we're going back and forth here. You can argue both sides of the story, you know, in, until you're blue in the face. Um, I'm not sure if there's really a, a right or a wrong answer in this whole thing because it's just it, it's like politics. <laughs> it's never ending. Oh, okay. So I I put a space black space here because i was going to talk about something but i think i already talked about it so so insinuating that the game has less at launch in order to make it easier on people's computer oh okay yeah you don't yet. have the hardware to run it is like saying they're basically dumbing down the game of content at launch just to make sure that casual gamers machines can run it but you do also realize that there's thousands upon thousands of other games throughout time that managed to you know merge seasons weather patterns the existence of animals and cities and stuff together right i mean you do realize that another pretty casual game minecraft which isn't honestly a hardware intensive game has been doing this for nearly a decade right right um okay minecraft is probably not 
um, a great example. Yes, that can sort of be considered a casual game, and that can also be considered a very hardcore game. Um, just ask anyone who spends years building, years building a structure or a city, or you're going to tell me that's a casual game? Uh-uh. Man, you've got to be pretty hardcore and dedicated to do some of the some of the amazing builds I've seen people do with Minecraft. Oh my word. And no, the episode doesn't actually end here. I didn't realize how long this video was until after I stopped recording, so I decided to break this into several parts. The next part is on the screen, so go ahead and click that to continue. Thanks for watching and hanging with me, and your comments are always welcome.